Good morning and welcome to my shop. Well, at least a small corner of it because I would, I would show you around, but I'm working on gifts right now and if I let you in on that, then it would spoil the secret for someone else. So we'll just stay here right now, but uh, you can see behind me, I've got equipment that I use for making pens and uh, this time is just gonna be a fun time of interacting and, and going that. My name is David Samuel. Uh, I'm the owner of Samuel Pen Company and thank you for joining me. Um, Samuel Pen Company, we've uh, been making pens for about 20 some years. Um, started out just uh, as, a, as a whim with my son and got to the point where I really enjoyed the fact that I could create these pieces of beauty that people could use and that I could use actually um, with some just some fun times of doing that. So anyway, there's, we have 22 different styles of pens that we create. Um, we use uh, 20 different kinds of exotic hardwood um, and we have each pen has about three different platings that that we use either gold or gunmetal or um, chrome and uh, depending upon the wood that it's paired with it makes for a stunning look of a piece of art as well as a functional piece that, that can be written with um, some of the distinctives that we have in our pen turning is that each pen is individually hand turned. We have a, I have a lathe that I use behind me. We don't have a copy attachment that can be, um, that can speed up the process and make every pen exactly the same. While it would be faster and it would be less expensive to do that, it would, it would destroy the, what we're trying to create and that is um, the, the uniqueness of the gift, the fact that each one is hand turned and it can be individual and no two pens are exactly alike. So what a person gets is the fact that it is a, a unique gift. Um, by the way, uh, during this time, if you've got any questions, go ahead and type them into the, uh, the, the user there and we'll uh, see if we can answer those as quickly as we can. Uh, we're going through some things today that uh, could spark some questions, so go ahead and jot them down and I'll get to them as quickly as I can. Um, another distinctive that we have other than the hand turning is the fact that we use a single segment of wood for both parts of the pen. Some pens are a single segment and some pens are a double segment pen we call them. Let me show you the difference. This would be a single segment pen where you have the pen that with one segment of wood. A double segment pen would have two segments of the wood and what we want to do on the double segment pen is have the grain consistent throughout the pen. So when the pen is in the closed position, all the grain will line up. This pen uh, is made out of blood wood. It doesn't have a real unique um, striking grain pattern like some, but uh, if you look closely at it, and I'd show you, but it's not going to come through with the camera all the grain is consistent throughout the pen. So we uh, try to do that, I try to do that as, as much as possible and take care in making sure everything is lined up. So um, thanks if you're just joining us, uh, great to have you. Again, my name is David Samuel with Samuel Pen Company and just talking about what we go through with um, making pens. The other thing that's very specific about um, and a, a distinctive of our pens is the fact that we do offer a guarantee on, on the unit. Whether there's, I mean, you're, we're working with a organic compound in wood and wood is going to shift from time to time. We try to make sure that, uh, that things don't happen and we take great care in making sure that that doesn't happen. But sometimes it does. And if it does, we'll take care of it. You just need to contact us and we'll, we'll make sure that we get that right and take care of that for you. One thing that I didn't mention, sometimes when I'm turning a pen, because we take great care in making sure that the grains align, if I'm turning a pen, there are times when things just, it's on the lathe and the wood just blows up and I've lost that pen. And what I have to do and what I want to do then is to, I have to throw both parts away and start over because I want that grain pattern separate. A lot of pen makers will use just whatever piece as long as it's the same kind of wood but the color may not match, the grains definitely don't match and while it's cheaper to do that because you're using less material, it just doesn't make for the uniqueness of the gift that, that I want to create. So that uh, single segment and the, the single grain source is, uh, is very, very important. 
One of the questions that I get asked a lot is, how did I start making pens? And I alluded to this kind of at the beginning, but I have always had a love of woodworking. I've been woodworking for probably 35 years now. I uh, started um, in junior high um, and got introduced to it, but because I, was, I grew up in a military family, uh, we moved all the time, couldn't keep a shop together. So it wasn't until my early adulthood when um, I had gotten married and my father-in-law really encouraged me to uh, pursue that passion. And so I bought first I scrimped and saved and bought a first table saw and worked, uh, added some equipment to that, worked out of a one-car garage, and uh, eventually just got to the point where I fell in love with the, the hobby and uh, it became a it became a, a passion, really therapy for me uh, to, to get out and be creative with my hands. Um, fast forward to about 1996, I always wanted to learn how to turn, uh, really never taken the time because I had other projects that were going on and, and didn't have the opportunity to do that. But my, I wanted to introduce my youngest son to woodworking and at, at the age of eight. And so back then uh, I decided to take a class on turning pens and he and I went together. He turned one half and I turned the other. And the product that we made, we eventually gave to my wife as a Mother's Day gift. But I was so enthralled by this process that I said, I can, let me buy this equipment that I need to be able to make these in my own shop. And so I bought the, the skewers, some of the, the turning tools you see behind me, but I didn't have enough money to buy a lathe because I just didn't have it in the budget. So what I ended up doing was learning how to turn vertically on this drill press back here. And so I made a, made a jig and was actually turning the pens vertically instead of the traditional horizontal turning that you would use on a lathe right now. I eventually was able to sell enough pens that I made enough money to buy a lathe, and I bought this lathe that you see behind me here, a 1970s version of a Craftsman uh, full-size lathe that I've used for the last 20 plus years. And uh, it, while there are other lathes out there that'll work great, this has worked well for me. And so I've turned thousands of pens on this lathe, and I bought this used from a gentleman who also was a turner, uh, with uh, uh, pens and other things like that. And so it's uh, been well used over the years that, that we've had it. So that's how I got started in pen turning. Uh, I have loved it. I just I love making a unique piece that's beautiful and functional. And um, the other, one of the other reasons that I started turning pens is I constantly lost pens. And so I figured, well, if I make my own pen and I lose it, then I just can make another one. I don't have to buy one. Well, Kind of the goofy thing is, is that I've, I started turning those pens and I started using them and then I stopped losing them. So I just haven't done that, which is a good thing, I guess. So that therapy allowed me to keep my mind on where those pens are at the time. Um, thanks for joining us again today. Um, if you're just new, my name is David Samuel, owner of Samuel Pen Company, and uh, you're sitting here in my shop with me as we're just talking about pen turning. Um, so that, that was one of the questions that um, came to me. And just want to shout out to Sarah. Hey, thanks for joining us. Uh, hopefully maybe you have your own shop and you can get out there and make your own stuff. But uh, if not, that's great too. One of the other things that uh, with the 22 different styles and 20 different styles of exotic hardwoods, I'm always looking for in unique pieces of wood that I can make pens out of. And we kind of come up with four different criteria that I use to find something that's interesting. One is the color. And, you know, we have here black walnut, we have uh, maple, we have cherry, those kind of things that are domestically available. Um, oak is another one. But there are a lot of exotic hardwoods that have some real interesting color to them. One that I really enjoy is, is Red Heart. And let me show you a piece of Red Heart and you can kind of get some of the graining on it. See the pattern on this. This is a deep red. You can see the, the graining in this piece, a beautiful piece of, of Red Heart that makes a stunning pen. As a matter of fact, um, I had a, an author that was so enamored with the color, uh, she decided to buy a fountain pen made out of Red Heart and write a fiction novel with a character named Red Heart. I don't know if that was completed, but uh, that was her goal, and she's been working on that for a while. So this, this uh, piece of wood, just the color is amazing that we don't 
get here locally in the United States. Another piece that uh, I use color-wise would be Purple Heart, and you can see kind of the different color with that. Purple Heart is a, almost an egg, it can darken to like an eggplant purple, but uh, makes a very striking pen when paired with either a gold plating or a chrome plating, and uh, just a fun word, wood to work with because the color is so unique. So color is a big part of the process that we use in selecting wood. Um, the question came in about the size of wood that's used. So I've got huge boards, but really we're using a piece that's about five and a half inches long would be the max on that. So really we're not using a lot, so you're, we're cutting it down quite a bit. But uh, that's, the, that's also the beauty of it because there's not a lot of material that's used with, with making that. Another criteria that I look for in wood is a grain pattern. What's a very interesting grain pattern that may um, cause some uniqueness in the look of the pen? Uh, one example I have here is a wood called zebra wood, and you can see the interesting striations of the grain in this, in, in this particular piece. Normally, we will um, cut along the wood this way so the grain is running a straight pattern. But sometimes, as you can see on this piece, I cut it at a, at a diagonal that um, then allows the grains to go in a different pattern that makes it very unique as well. Uh, more material is used that way, but it does make for a, a, a fascinating looking pen that way. Um, question came in of, of where do we get the wood from? Um, uh, hey Ryan, glad you're here with us. Um, I, I purchase the wood at, at, from online retailers, uh, get some locally, uh, have collected some from uh, around the United States as we've done some traveling. We've got, um, I have a piece, I have uh, boards of chestnut, American chestnut, which is an interesting story in and of itself. It used to be huge groves of, of chestnut in the East Coast and the Midwest. And early 1900s, there was a chestnut blight that went through and wiped out all of the huge stands of, of American chestnut. And uh, so now, I mean, we still can get American chestnut, but it's not the real big trees anymore that they used to be. Well, I was able to come across um, some uh, a chestnut that was used in a 100-year-old barn out in the uh, Ohio-Miami Valley area and uh, brought some of that back and have made some pens out of that that are just amazingly uh, interesting looking with the grain pattern and the color and the history behind it. Which leads to another aspect of, of wood is what's the story behind it? Um, some woods are, are striking just because of the beauty itself, but what about the history behind that piece of wood? Um, let's take for instance uh, a piece of olive wood. I'll show you a piece of olive wood here that has some interesting grain patterns. Um, Olive is a very interesting, this, this actually, this piece came from uh, Israel. Uh, it's uh, known as Bethlehem olive wood. But olive trees can live up to 2,000 years. And it's very possible that this small piece of olive wood was part of a tree, a young tree, at the time of Christ during, in, that, in that region. So that to me is very interesting, the fact that they live so long and uh, also have just a beautiful grain pattern to it as well. Another example of that would be uh, a tree from New Zealand called the Kauri tree. Kauri trees also live up to about 2,000 years. Um, they're massive trees. They can grow up to 150 feet tall. And the interesting story about them was that they um, were used during the, um, during the James Cook sailing vessel type time period where they would come in and, and use these trees as their ship masts because they were so straight. Um, have a piece of cowrie here that uh, I did pick up in New Zealand. It's a uh, very interesting grain pattern, just really pretty uh, plain, but the interesting thing about this piece of wood is that it was submerged in a lake for, I don't know, 100, 150 years that they finally drug out, dried off, and then reclaimed it. And so they've been making things out of cowrie for, for several years now. But that's a, an interesting piece of wood with an interesting story. We also use 
um, pieces of wood. I've got some pieces of wood from that are white oak that were actually used in Jack Daniels whiskey barrels. So when you turn it, it has a nice, not a nice smell to it, but uh, um, yeah. So we, but that's an interesting thing if you're a whiskey lover. That's something that uh, could resonate with. Um, whoever purchases that to say, hey, this came from a Jack Daniels number seven whiskey barrel. And uh, another piece that's very interesting is white pine. White pine is a very, uh, very prolific throughout the United States. Um, but the interesting story about this piece is that it was part of the Atlantic City boardwalk that was destroyed by Hurricane Sandy. So I have a few of these pieces that um, to make pens out of just for those that either grew up in that area or that um, have significance, uh, that the boardwalk has significance in their lives and they can have a piece of that history as well. Um, hey, just uh, thanks for joining us. We've got Emily from Florida. We've got Bruce and Andrew. Welcome, thanks for joining us today. Uh, my name is David Samuel owner of Samuel Pen Company, and we're just talking about uh, pen turning process and how selection of wood is made. Um, there's some other things that go into that. We've got, uh, one of the big things though, is the deformity within wood. So we've, we've got the color, we've got the grain pattern, we've got the interesting story that comes from those pieces of wood, but also the deformities. And what I mean by that is, um, any of the burls, any of the um, other things are all caused by damage from an insect. So if you have bird's eye maple, if you have um, any other burls that, it's a, basically a fungus that gets into the tree and it deforms the tree and it's this growth that kind of comes out. Well, those are cut off and those are, 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 those are used for different turnings. The thing that's so cool about them is that what the bug has meant to destroy the tree, we get a real thing of beauty from it. Let me show you an example. This is a piece of burl in its block form that um, really doesn't look a whole lot like anything. But once we turn it and get it down, it can come into something that has a really interesting grain path. And this happens to be a box elder burl that is dyed red, but you can see all the different striations and everything else within that pen. And um, burls just make a fascinating looking pen because they're, they're so unique. The other thing here in Colorado that uh, we deal with a lot is beetle kill pine. And it's been in the news uh, recently here with a lot of the uh, ski slopes that are reclaiming that and making skis out of them. Well, I've been doing the same thing with um, pine that was reclaimed from here in the Black Forest area. Um, this is a board of beetle kill pine um, that was also kind of went through the Black Forest fire a number of years ago. But what happens in the beetle kill is that this beetle gets into the wood and it excretes an enzyme that stains the wood blue and it kills the trees and then we have to cut them down and it's just it's ugly but once the pen is turned it makes a beautiful looking grain pattern with the different colors i've seen blue i've seen bits of red i've seen some of the the chocolate brown as you can see in here and it just makes for a very unique pen um, what the insect came to destroy we're able to use and make a thing of beauty out of it so um, another, just an interesting thing of the deformities that we can use to make that. And, and if you look at, if you go to a wood store, it's always the burls, it's always the um, woods that have been deformed by nature that are really expensive. And so it kind of tells you that, okay, there is value in, in some of that destruction that even though it does happen and we hate to see it, it can be used for good. Um, we talked about kind of where I get exotic, these exotic hardwoods from. Locally, there are online distributors that, that come and, uh, you know, just browsing through um, a local store will give fresh insight and fresh ideas of, oh, how can I use that in a way that it would be, it would be amazing. So, um, I, yeah, let's see. One of, the, one of the question that kind of comes to me is how do I select the pen style? And that's, that's more of a subjective thing to me. I kind of look at it and say, okay, would I, could I see myself using that pen? And 
you know, so I, you know, yeah, I like that, or no, I don't particularly care for the style or something like that. So we just kind of go through, always looking for unique things, but um, we've settled on some that uh, we think are universal, but uh, we're always looking for new things and introducing new, um, new styles. By the way, if uh, every now and then we introduce a new style, we'll run a contest on our Facebook page and on Instagram to um, name the pen. We had a gentleman out in California who uh, we were running a special, um, running a name the pen kind of promo, and uh, he uh, gave us a name that we really liked, and we chose that for the pen and uh, sent him the pen as a gift. And he's using that. His comment was, "This is my favorite pen <laughs> that he uses." So, um, hey, you never know. We'll introduce a new pen. You might be able to do that. So um, I really appreciate you guys being here. Um, again, um, let's uh, yeah, let's uh, uh, kind of go to that. And uh, I just want to thank you for being with us. Um, let me grab one thing here real quick. So thanks again for being here. I just want you to know that as a craftsman, I really love creating a pen that's that's beautiful i love the way it feels i love the smoothness of it i love the look of it i love the feel of it in my hand and that's what really gives me great joy um i you know check out the options on our website at samuelpenco.com um, we've got all those things that you can use for um, and that you can choose from we do offer two different kinds of finishes that uh, can be used we have a high gloss finish which is what this one is this is um, actually an acrylic finish that we use over the wood. It's sanded down to um, 12,000 grit, so it's, it's polished um, very well. We also use a matte, satin matte finish, which you can't really see that here, but it gives you more of the feel of the wood. You can actually feel the grain pattern, and sometimes the oils from your hand will change the patina of the wood. So it gives you a different option. We also do engraving um, with um, our pens. Um, and you can see kind of an example of that. It's backwards because of the camera, but it does, engraving does show up well on, on some of the pens, but space is limited, so you can't put out the whole Gettysburg address or the, um, the yeah, you can't do anything long. So uh, keep it short and do that. If when you're checking out the website, you have any questions, contact us. I'll, I'll answer your questions. I'll help walk you through the process. And, um, you know, you will get me, you won't get an operator that has no idea of what's going on, but we can chat and kind of figure out how, you know, if you're looking for a gift, we can talk through some of the options and, you know, hand size and things like that. Um, one, one question that just came in from Ryan is what finish um, produces the most uh, reliable product? I really prefer the acrylic finish just because it is so hard on it's so hard and it, it really makes the pen last quite a bit. Um, on some of the softer woods like the beetle kill pine, on aspen and things like that, we recommend the uh, well also just always use the acrylic finish because it's so soft and it, it protects the wood a lot better. I had one gentleman and one client who um, told me that his pen ran through the, through the washing machine and the dryer and with the acrylic finish on it, it came out beautifully and there was no problem with it at all. So um, that's kind of what we have standard used. Um, we have used that uh, with the engraving, however, we have to use the matte finish because um, the, the acrylic finish gets destroyed when it's engraved. So that's kind of one of the options. Um, that we do. Another question that just came in is how long does it take to create a pen? Um, not as long as you'd think. I can probably do one start to finish in uh, 30 minutes to an hour depending upon the wood. So um, it goes pretty quickly and it's, it's, but it's fun to be able to do that. Um, if you're contacting us, the best way to do that is either send me a private message on the Facebook page or you can go through the contact form on the website. Uh, we'll get those and we'll answer those as quickly as we can. If you'd like to follow me on Facebook, please do so. I'm on Instagram and on Facebook. And um, if you want the uh, insider scoop on new pen releases and specials, then fill out the contact form on the SamuelPenco.com website. 
uh, enter insider into the message and we'll add your name to the list. Hey, thanks so much for joining us. Again, thanks for coming into the shop. I love having people in. Uh, we've done classes here where I've taught different individuals how to turn pens, and so it's always fun to, to have that available. So thank you very much. Look forward to your questions and contacting you in the future.